Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very packed episode of CSK News. And also, I just want to forewarn you guys as well. Later on in today's episode, I'll be sharing with all of you who are trade banned, who cannot sell steam market goods or any CSK items right now or trade them at all because of the new Dutch laws out there. I will tell you guys how to get untrade banned or actually sell those items later on in the video. And also, I'll give you guys some life updates at the back half of today's episode. You guys can probably expect that like once a week, letting you guys know how my job is going, that kind of stuff. But I hope you guys all enjoy today's very packed episode. So let's get into it. And first of which, obviously, most important, we actually have Envious releasing both their academy and their main rosters. Now this was foreseen by a lot of people out there and also going forward we have Kiyoshima making their posts, other players making their posts as well. It does seem right now the overall issue was financially you know, being Envious cannot continue any longer with their given results, having an academy team and a main team, other esports teams out there, but also their owner and CEO also posted a video out there as well and a very cool video because he released all these Envious guys from their, from their contracts without having to sell them out and that is actually a very generous thing we do not see too often anymore when these players actually agree to big buyouts. Of course, we have, you know, uh, MBK, a good example, being held kind of, I guess you could say, hostage by G2 over there. He cannot be bought out by any teams right now because they will not release him from that buyout or actually release his contract. Envious released all of their players, the entire academy roster and the main roster, without any fees, any buyouts whatsoever, which costs them probably several hundred thousand dollars and a very gracious thing for them to do. And going forward, it does seem, based off what they said in their video as well, which I'll link down below, Envious now in the future, they're not going to be straying away from CSGO, but they will be going a fully North American team, which is very exciting stuff to see in the future. So of course, we have big names out there now available from Envious's former roster. It's going to be cool to see where people like Happy, where Scream, where RPK, those guys go. But also, Kiyoshima had a big post about this for all of you guys who are curious about the Asian Championships coming up sometime soon. It does seem that Happy and RPK will remain on the bench, XMS and Sixer will replace them, and Kiyoshima will lead that team as their IGL, which brings up a big question because we also had big articles out there by Decay. I'll link his full story down below for all of you guys. Brought to us by Double Tap Esports. It does seem that MBK was sought out by Cloud9 and FaZe Clan. Of course, both those teams needing an IGL or any, any kind of role out there to replace Olaf Meister on FaZe Clan. And of course, FNS currently on Cloud9's bench. He was formerly their IGL. It seems like Tarek is taking over the IGL role now. But both FaZe Clan and Cloud9 significantly need a player out there to replace those two big members. Now, we could argue that Chroman's doing a great job on FaZe Clan and, and Cloud9 still obviously needs a replacement IGL. GL wise unless Tarek wants to continue but could Kiyoshima prove to be that role if he does go to the Asian Championships so as of right now guys Envious is now no longer going to be a French organization in terms of CSGO they'll continue on as North American teams maybe sometime in the future who those North American teams could be well thanks to Joe Cardali it could literally be anyone in Mountain Dew League right now there are so many North American options in terms of lower tier North American teams but still it could be a significant roster in North American terms especially with Envious based here out of Texas in the US it can be cool to see what kind of roster they do fun and how much money they really put in to a new roster. But also on top of that, it does seem NBK is being held hostage by G2. Reported by Decay, his buyout is actually too high and it's non-negotiable and that's why Cloud9 and FaZe Clan could not pick him up. So is he worth the money? Uh, apparently these teams think not, but going forward, it's going to be very cool to see who actually fills in for FaZe Clan, who fills in for Cloud9. Will they actually bring FNS back into the roster as, as a non-IGL role? Some big things coming soon. And even in bigger news, like I mentioned previously in this video, for all of you guys who have been trade banned by the new Dutch laws apparently being put in place. Uh, apparently the Dutch government reaching out to Valve and saying if they do not actually, you know, ban or actually put a block on those skins right now in terms of trading as well as selling on the Steam market, they're going to get in very big legal trouble. So apparently Valve is temporarily shutting down all the trading, all the selling for the Steam market for anyone located in those Dutch countries. As of right now, it's only the Netherlands though, not Germany. So for all of you guys who are wondering if you're in the Netherlands right now and you have to, if you want to sell skins and actually you're trying to panic sell them or you're trying to trade them away, here is the one way around that. Currently a lot of players out of those areas are actually trade banned. I guess you could say it's a trade ban or a trade hold, and they cannot even sell their skins on the Steam market. This is very abrupt out of nowhere. So for all of you big skin buyers out there who actually want to panic and sell those, there are one of two options. Now, I think as of right now, we've confirmed you might need to do both of these things, and both of them are very easy. Just one, change your country on Steam, and two, use a VPN. Now, I would recommend once you sell your skins, once you trade them away, I would really recommend stop using the VPN and change your country back to what it really is on Steam, but that's a great way of, to avoid that right now. So for all of you guys who are panicking out there right now who cannot sell or trade your skins, change your Steam country. I actually had a viewer out there reach out to me. Thanks to you, ha Hafe, I believe his name is, or, or Jaffe, however you pronounce it. He changed his country as well as you to VPN, and he can actually trade away his skins or sell them on the Steam market, and that is one solution around this right now. It does seem the future, right? We're not really sure. It does seem the Dutch government, of course, the first one to actually ban these loot box skins or these skins in game right now for CSGO, but will other European countries follow suit? It's 
actually a big worry. We, of course, had the Belgian prime minister a long time ago. He was the first European country prime minister to actually target this, but it's the Netherlands that strike first and actually ban them. So be careful for all of you guys who want to panic sell. Feel free to. Of course, you can't really panic sell on OP skins anymore. So there's some big issues coming soon. We'll see how Valve does deal with them. And also, for all of you guys who are wanting the current updates right now, also Valve making really good updates towards that UI panorama. I'll list the updates on screen for all of you very shortly, as well as give you guys kind of some key features of the updates of UI panorama. Obviously, my video uh, yesterday did not really give into too much detail as to what exactly changed or could be changed in the future. So thanks to my man, Dab Daniel, for actually sending these changes. I'll give you guys screenshots on screen right now as well to see what we've actually changed so far, what's coming soon once this actually leaves the beta. So it's really cool stuff. Of course, first of all, we have a brand new buy menu as well as a new radar alert. If you're in a certain part of the map, it's, it's a pretty extensive part of the map. You can actually get that radar alert or the bomb alert once it's planted if you're within that certain uh, radius of the bomb itself. So of course, it's a pretty big chunk of the map, but it could be a big problem if you are on the wrong bomb site. You're not going to be alerted by this radar alert, but it's still a very cool update. We also have on top of that, guys, there could be a possible gap added. It's not really sure right now between the stat track marker and the trigger of all pistols. Not really a big update there, but also on the buy menu as well, you can now see your full team's buyout and their loadouts, including down to their HE grenades. So it's a very, very cool system there. I'm not really sure about the full details about the previous loadout screen, but still some great things for the pro scene as well with that update. And very last, we also have grenades now apparently throwing off less dirt and less debris when they do explode. That way, it's kind of more transparent. So when you throw an HE grenade, whatever it might be, and it explodes, that way you can actually see better through that HE grenade explosion. And those are the updates so far for UI Panorama. Obviously, bigger updates coming soon. And also, we've had confirmed right now, I believe, the FPS in-game against bots has been way smoother. So I've, I've seen things reported anywhere from 30 to 60 FPS increase just against bots. Now, the real test of this UI Panorama, though, is once it's out of beta, you can actually play matchmaking, casual matches, online matches against other players. That's where it's going to be the big test if the FPS has increased. This is actually good hope, so it does seem right now FPS has definitely improved. We're going to find out, though, once it's actually out of beta. And very lastly, for today's episode of CSK News, guys, and probably the most important news, I'm going to release a video later this weekend about this. Overall, my thoughts about VGO and why I'm skeptical, though. VGO did launch last night, and again, I'll have a dedicated video about this in a couple days. I have some other videos planned for you guys, but I would say remain skeptical. Now, we have VGO announced their partnership with OP Skins a long time ago. They've now officially launched with OP Skins and their new Express Trade system. This is pretty much an update to only save gambling. It's not going to be CSGO related at all, although if you guys do like the skins, the way they look, they look... Uh, very, very similar to CSGO skins or maybe PUBG skins as well. I think it's a great thing for all the gamblers out there. Will it help CSGO? Most likely not. So for all of you guys who actually enjoy gambling, it's a great update. Although we still don't know who owns VGO. And on top of that, the main problem I have so far is VGO and its, it's demand and supply is, is what actually uh, changes the prices of these skins. So I know a lot of you guys are going to say it's the same as CSGO skins, right? A lot of the supply and demand of CSGO skins is what causes the crashes and rises of the CSGO skin prices, but that's not true. You could actually play with a CSGO skin. This is a figment of the imagination. These VGO skins do not exist in any game. You cannot play them in any game. You can still buy, trade, and sell them, but they are fictitious. They are based off the Ethereum blockchain, and that's also a benefit. Of course, there's a downside. You can't actually see them in game. You can't have them in your hands, and that's why the tradeability is going to be a bit down, but it's a great thing because it cannot get shut down. So for all of you gamblers out there who are skeptical about losing your skins or having bots be banned with your skins in them, the one great thing about this is that cannot happen. It's based on the blockchain technology. Technology. That is no one's no one's rightful claim. So Valve cannot shut this down, which is a great thing, but it's really not tied to CSGO any longer. It's mainly just an OP skins thing. And also, again, like I said before, the supply and demand is what causes the prices. So these prices can crash and rise very, very infrequently. So please be careful for all of you guys who are now buying the keys on OP skins and opening cases and crates. Be very careful. I'm sure I'll do it in the future myself just to test it out. But let me do the testing or let someone else with, with uh, you know, the experience. That sounds bad. I'm not rich. But let, let's maybe, let, let, me included, let's let someone else with the money actually try this system out and see how it goes. So I hope you guys are on today's episode of CSK News. Now on to some life updates, though, about my crazy first day of work. I cannot stress enough how much I love my work environment. I'm going to uh, probably release a video probably sometime next week about my job, exactly what I'll be doing in the future of esports. But I cannot tell you guys enough. And my coworkers might be watching this video right now. But they, they seem awesome. Like, I could not even ask for a better work environment. It's a pretty small team there. A great office, a great atmosphere. The people I'm working with, you guys will probably meet in the future. They are like so down to earth. I can wear whatever I want to work. The work environment is pretty much just what I would always dream of. It is, 
I could not ask for anything better. So I'm so excited to tell you guys the future of that. Today was my first day and it was, it was awesome. I cannot wait to make some great content for these guys and uh, hopefully have it be the future of esports. So as always, thank you all for watching. Leave a comment down below. I'm going to try and get some time later tonight to actually reply to comments or this weekend. And uh, this weekend, I also finally get furniture. I might have a couch, maybe a bed. Right now, I'm in a sleeping bag, so it's been pretty rough. But thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time. My name is Jake. I like you. Goodbye, guys.